Hello and welcome to all our Fall 2022 Life Groups here at Gateway. I, I want to thank you if you're leading a Life Group or if you're part of a Life Group together this fall at our church. Thank you for taking seriously that important step in your discipleship journey by getting connected around the Word of God, around prayer, and around fellowship with each other. You know, we believe our discipleship pathway here at Gateway makes life groups an important part of what it means to grow in your walk with God. We worship together on Sundays, and we take that next step to connect with each other, to be in community with each other. We cannot grow on our own alone. We need the, pe the pe people of God, the Spirit of God, the power of God in our life. And so by joining a life group this fall, you're taking seriously your spiritual walk with the Lord. And I want to commend you for that, encourage you in that, and inspire you to keep plugging along. Uh, we are going to meet for the next eight weeks or so in these groups. So commit to it for two months here, September and October into the first week of November here in 2022. Commit to being a part of these groups. Commit to reading God's Word and to praying with each other, to encouraging each other, to be making these sessions together so that you might grow, that you might get to know each other more, and as well, most importantly, get to know the God that we love and worship even more so deeply. Uh, I, I want to thank as well, one more time, those who are leaving our groups. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. Uh, this fall, we're going through the book of Nehemiah together. We, we started the series on Sunday morning. In fact, our life groups are going to be based off of the message from the previous Sunday in our worship services. So if after you hear some time here in the, in the Word of God in our class, if you're interested in more, maybe you missed the last Sunday, then I want to encourage you, go back, listen to the message, and hear it as well in a more extensive way. Uh, but each week, we're going to get deeper into those verses that we share and talk about on Sunday and seek to apply them. Uh, the book of Nehemiah, we're saying the theme for this series and really for this next year for us at Gateway is this idea of rebuild, rebuild. It is never too late for a new beginning. That it is never too late with God for him to do something new in our lives, for him to do something new in our families, and for him to do new things in our church. Uh, the book of Nehemiah, it's uh, the last historical moments here of the Hebrew Old Testament. It's the period in time and in life in the nation of Israel where they have now come back from exile. Assyria in 722 for the north and for Jerusalem and Judah in the south, 586 by the Babylonians. But now in around 445 BC here for Nehemiah, the final kind of group comes back from exile, now under Persian exile. And they are reestablishing themselves in the land. They are given the opportunity for a new beginning. It's been over a hundred years since Jerusalem was ransacked by the Babylonians. It's been hundreds of years since the tribes of the north saw their capital in Samaria and those nations being taken away captive to Assyria and other locales. Uh, it's been hundreds of years of pain and difficulty where things have been broken down. Now, God was still active and working in the life of the people of God during that time period. We read the book of Daniel and others where we see God still working through the leaders that God anointed and set apart in those time periods. However, now God is bringing the nation back to Israel, reestablishing them in the land. And God has called Nehemiah, along with several other key leaders in that period, to rebuild the walls, to reestablish this nation in the land. Uh, we said, as we talked about on Sunday, that the book of Nehemiah is really connected with uh, the book of Ezra. In fact, the scripture in the Hebrew Old Testament oftentimes just had them together. In fact, that's how it was always together. It was Ezra and Nehemiah. It covers this time period of the return. First, under the leadership of Zerubbabel, where he begins to rebuild the temple. Then, under the leadership of Ezra, where he begins to build the people spiritually as they find the word of God and recommit themselves. And then Nehemiah, when Nehemiah rebuilds the walls around the city, reestablishing them as their own place and their own people and setting them apart again as a city unto God. And so when you're studying the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, you're really supposed to read them all together to see how God was working in the life of this nation and how God called Nehemiah 
this amazing leader, this man whose name means God comforts, to help lead the people back, to be a part of the rebuilding efforts of God in the land. Rebuild, it's never too late for a new beginning. It wasn't for the nation of Israel too late. And likewise for us, over the next several weeks, we're going to seek to apply that in our own lives as well. It is never too late for God to do something new. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is never too late in coming to rebuild the brokenness in your heart? Whatever pain, whatever difficulty, whatever loss, that God sees it as never being too late for him to rebuild relationships that you're a part of that are still needing hope and reconciliation and healing, that God is in the business of this. And we're going to see ultimately that as we look to Jesus, the ultimate one who rebuilds all things, that resurrection life is that promise, that hope, that even death is not the end for God to resurrect and rebuild us when we know him by faith. And we look to Jesus as our example. Uh, but today we're talking about uh, the first four verses uh, in summary and, and reminder of what we talked about this Sunday. Uh, we, we said the theme was how to start a rebuild. How do you start a rebuild? How would Nehemiah begin this journey? And as we think about it in our own lives as well, how do we begin? I want to read for us verses uh, one through four today. And then I want us to see the three building blocks we discussed about what it takes to start a rebuild. What are those three Lego pieces, if you will, that need to be laid out as part of the foundation if we're to rebuild our lives and rebuild our hopes and dreams in God? So this is the word of God. This is Nehemiah chapter 1. It says, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now it happened in the month of Kislev, November, December roughly, in the 20th year, as I was in Susa, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept, and mourn for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Nehemiah. Here's this report. It says that Nehemiah is in Susa, the citadel there in Persia. It was the winter residence of the king. We'll learn later on that Nehemiah is the cupbearer, that he has a prominent role in the leadership of the Persian Empire at this time under the leadership of Artaxerxes. As he is there during roughly November, December, that's the month of Kislev, his brother, and many people believe this might actually be his literal brother, Hanani, comes to him with a report of what's going on in Jerusalem. Remember, he's, he, he, he's in another land. He's in another capital, but he knows his Jewish identity and his love for his people. He's heard the reports of Zerubbabel and Ezra and others who have led the reforms and also the, the, uh, the release from, from exile back into these lands. And he's asking, what's the report? How's Judah doing? Is Jerusalem being rebuilt? Is there joy? And the report that Hanani, his brother, and the others give him only make him more distraught. He says that they're in great trouble and shame and the wall is broken down. That God's people that have returned back to the land after years and years of exile, that they themselves are finding themselves in the midst of a land where there is opposition, where there's shame and trouble, and the walls have yet to be rebuilt. We said that in order for us to begin a rebuild, we need to first make an honest assessment. We need an honest evaluation of the situation. And here, Nehemiah wants the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. What, what's going on back home? And, and likewise, for us in our life, we, we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be honest about the things in our lives that are broken. We need to be honest about the relationships that we need God to do the healing work amidst. We need to be honest about what role we played potentially in some of the brokenness we are experiencing in our lives. We need to be that individual who looks at the man or the woman in the mirror and is willing to say, yes, that is me. Lord, help me. We talked about from uh, O.S. Hawkins, that wonderful book that he has on Nehemiah, how there could be the opportunity and desire for us to be superficially optimistic, uh, to pretend as if things are okay when they're really not, like in Jeremiah 8.11, where it says, peace, peace, 
when there is no peace. Uh, we don't want to be that way. We want to be honest with where we're at. What's an honest assessment of the brokenness around us? Now, we, we said as well, we don't want to be a, just a busy optimist, an individual that sees brokenness and then just gets to work, not really knowing whether or not they're rectifying the problem. Some of us do this in our relationships. Uh, we are trying to remedy brokenness from years back by being active in certain ways, by, by acting as if nothing ever happened, when in reality, we need to be honest. So we want to be that honest optimist, the individual who honestly looks at the lay of the land, yet optimistically says, God could do the work. It's never too late for a new beginning with God. What do you need to be honest about today? We're going to talk about that in our small groups here in a second. Uh, what situations, what relationships, what brokenness in your own life do you need to be honest before God and either confess or seek to be reconciled or seek to offer forgiveness to others? But we see Nehemiah then move on. Uh, once he gets this honest assessment of what is going on, he, he goes to the next step in the rebuild process, and that's empathizing with the need of others. He said, as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. Here, Nehemiah has a brokenness, like Ezra does back in Ezra chapter 9, verses 4 through 5. When he hears of the spiritual, sinful brokenness of the people, here Ezra shows empathy. Empathy. Uh, what an important re reality and need for us as followers of Jesus. To be empathetic to the needs of others. To be empathetic when others are struggling and hurting. To be empathetic about how even our actions may be the reason why others are hurting and struggling. Many of us see brokenness, things that need to be rebuilt, and we may be ready to tell people what to do, give them ideas, give out strategies and plans. And we're going to see Nehemiah later on in his book is full of those types of practical reminders for sure. But this is a reminder in our text today that we need to, first of all, be empathetic with the needs of others. There needs to be brokenness, and there's especially honesty about how we play it in. Uh, but lastly today, and I, I want to get you guys right into your discussion around this text as you look to apply it. We see not only did he make an honest assessment of the situation, not only did he have empathy, but thirdly, there's a humility, a humility he has before God. It says at the end of verse 4, And I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. The God of heaven. On Sunday, we talked about at the beginning of chapter 2 how then it reminds us that it's in the month of Nisan where he approaches the king. That means that there was a four-month time period where Nehemiah humbles himself, where Nehemiah humbles himself before God, fasting and praying. As he's literally going before the one, Artaxerxes, who on earth can be the one to begin the rebuild, he humbles himself and waits on God in that time period. Next week, we're going to see the role of personal responsibility and prayer and how that plays an important part in the rebuild efforts in our life as well. But for today, we look to Nehemiah's example of humility. You know, uh, many of us see things broken in our lives and we want to fix them right away. Many of us see things broken in our communities and we want to be a part of the action. We may see things as well, even in our own church, that we want to see God bring new life to as we seek to reach generations for Christ here. But first, in order to get there, we need to be humble. Humble ourselves before God and wait on Him for His timing, fasting, praying, seeking His will. That's how you start a rebuild. You just don't begin grabbing bricks and rebuilding the wall. No, Nehemiah got an honest assessment, showed true empathy, and humbled himself before God. What a great start for us in our life as well. And as we closed on Sunday, I close this uh, today with you as well, whenever you're watching it, from Hebrews chapter 4, our reminder that Jesus showed us the ultimate example of the one who empathized with us in order to meet our needs. In Hebrews 4, 15, it says that we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize or sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every aspect has been tempted yet we, as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy 
and find grace to help in our time of need. May we go to God's throne of grace today and find him being ever merciful and gracious to help rebuild the brokenness in our lives. Honesty, empathy, humility, those are the first building blocks to any rebuild. And remember, in the eyes of God, whatever needs to rebuild, be rebuilt in our life, it's never too late for a new beginning.